Hello, bio two. This is Mr. B. We're continuing on with chapter 27 with our worms, and today we're going to take a look at the round worms. So we've taken a look at flatworms, now we're moving on to round worms. So what is a round worm? So most species of round worms are free living, inhabiting soil, salt flats, aquatic sediments, and water, and they live from polar regions to the tropics. So they live in a wide, wide range of places. And however, some are parasitic and will live inside hosts. So we're going to take a look at in the next video at those parasitic worms as well. So we're going to look at what are the defining features of this group, what makes them so different than the other types of worms. So roundworms are going to be unsegmented worms that have pseudocolums and digestive systems with two openings, a mouth and an anus. So this is our first group of animals that actually has two digestive openings because again the flatworms and the cnidarians both had just one opening for food and waste and now we actually have two openings for your mouth and an anus and then roundworms will have a body cavity between the endoderm and mesoderm tissue so this is going to be a new uh, new feature that flatworms only had one body cavity as well as the cnidarians and this cavity is partially lined with tissue derived from the mesoderm and it's called a pseudocolum meaning false colum so it's not quite a colum yet but it's getting to the point to where it is almost going to function uh, the way the colum does in their next group of worms but they are getting there they almost have the colum and then the roundworms again as another review they have a, di a digestive tract with two openings and food will move in one direction through the digestive tract of roundworms so again it just goes in and then just follows one path goes in through the mouth follows the same path and then it'll leave the body through the anus which is the any food that is not digested will lead the body through the anus, which I just said. So those are the defining characteristics, big one being that they're unsegmented, that they have two digestive tract openings, and they have that pseudocolum. That's what's going to set them apart from the rest of the worms. So form and function in roundworms, so what do they look like, how do they move? So they have specialized tissues and organ systems that will carry out their essential body functions or physiological functions, so they do have organ systems. And feeding, so many free-living roundworms will use grasping mouth parts and spines to catch and eat other small animals. So they have a strong mouth and grasping mouth parts to kind of help chase them down. And again, there's others that are going to be parasites, which we will talk about in our next video. And then for respiration, circulation, and excretion, roundworms will exchange gases and excrete metabolic waste through their body walls. That's just how the, all the other animals have done it, their cells being very close to the external environment. And so they then depend on diffusion to carry nutrients and waste through their bodies. Again, this is nothing new from the other ones that we've talked about. They just simply travel from areas of high concentration to areas of low concentration. So no major system, no circulatory systems to kind of make them carry that out. And then how do they respond? So roundworms will have, will have a simple nervous system that consists of several ganglia, which that, remember, that's just a concentration of nerve cells. And several nerves will extend from ganglia in the head, and they will run the length of the body. And these nerves will transmit sensory information, and they will control movement. So they can sense the environment with their ganglia, and they will help them control their movement as well. So how they actually move, so fluid, and the pseudocolum and muscles extend the length of their bodies and they function as a hydrostatic skeleton which has been mentioned before so that means that aquatic roundworms can contract their muscles to move like snakes through the water where soil dwelling roundworms will push their way through the soil by thrashing around so they have kind of almost like that serpentine that s motion when you see them swimming in the water and then they kind of do the same thing they just thrash around in the soil and that is how they are going to move through the soil and so how do these worms reproduce? So roundworms will reproduce sexually, and most species will have separate sexes. And again, remember the flatworms were hermaphrodites, where they were both sexes found inside one organism. And they will reproduce using internal fertilization. So that means their egg is fertilized inside of the body. And then there are parasitic roundworms that will have life cycles that involve two or three different hosts, or they will have live in several different organs within a single host so that's nice you could have a worm living in multiple places on your body so that is it for the first part of round worms let me know if you have any questions